Hey, what's up, garden friends? I accidentally hit record, so I just did, let's just go with it. Setting things up here, happy Fern Friday. I picked this one up from a local nursery not too terribly long ago. Very, very pretty, interesting looking fern, isn't it? So it is labeled as an Elkhorn fern. I'll pull the tag up there, so that makes a little bit more sense. I thought Elkhorn ferns were uh, platycerums, not polypodiums, but I could be wrong, or maybe they're synonymous. I don't know. You let me know down in the comments. It's going to be another one of those Fern Fridays where it's kind of more of a discussion and like a look at how pretty this is over like this is how you take care of it. I'll tell you what I know and what I plan on doing with the fern. So assuming that this is actually the Polypodium polycarpum, which is I believe synonymous with Microsorum punctatum, that's going to be the fern we're talking about here. It's a tropical fern, tender to frost, can be grown in potting soil, can be grown in the ground, or can be grown as an epiphyte in nature, out in the wild. I'm pretty sure that this will mostly be seen as an epiphyte. And the tag has this labeled as a grandiceps, which means that it should be one of the, I believe the dwarf variety is only getting a, roughly a foot tall, a little bit taller than that. I don't know if that's the case with this one because it's already over a foot tall, which is, that's kind of what has me suspicious with this guy, with this labeling, since it's already bigger than what that plant with the grandiceps is supposed to get. Yet to be, I should say. See, we have some kind of wonky foliage going on over here. This is a very thirsty fern. It hasn't been very fussy for me when it's gotten too dry, but at the same time, its foliage has gone a little bit limp. That's why I'm giving it a good soak right now. This is actually its second soak. It already soaked up one of those, so I went ahead and refilled it. Figure since I'm sitting here doing the Fern Friday thing, go ahead and let her have a drink. The one thing I have noticed, look at that's gonna, that's not gonna focus very well. So one thing I have noticed while I have had this fern is that it really does like humidity an awful lot, which is kind of a gimme with a lot of ferns, but. If this had been applied to serum, then I would think that it would be a little bit more tolerant to the drier air. It does seem to like a high filtered light, no direct light. It burned very, very quickly when it got just a little bit of full sun, like not very long at all. This might help if I showed you where it burned, huh? So you can kind of see there's some crispy foliage in there from where it got a little bit too much light and over here as well. And it was like not long at all just a few minutes it crisped up very quickly and that could be for a few different reasons though maybe uh, the person who was growing it before i bought it they had it in like heavy heavy shade so it just didn't have a chance to acclimate and it really i didn't even think it was getting direct sun but i did notice that that photo oxidation that the burning was happening there uh, for just from like light reflecting onto it from the pavement. So I'm gonna avoid that in the future. I'm going to be putting this fern more than likely into a hanging basket. Something cocoa lined or moss lined. If I use something cocoa lined with this, then I'll probably line the inside of the basket with the little, sorry. I'll line the inside of that basket with some sort of plastic material and poke some holes in there for a drainage. That'll just keep it from drying out so quickly. I would prefer to use a moss covered pot or a moss lined basket, I should say. And that's because with this having an epithetic nature to it, I think that it would start to grow around the structure a little bit better than it would something that's cocoa lined, but I don't know, we'll see. Moss lined baskets are kind of pricey. Even if you do it yourself, it's not very cheap to go that route. Does the name Microsorum sound familiar to anybody? Any other plant fish nerds out there, planted aquarium nerds? Microsorum is a family of aquatic fern. So this one is not aquatic, but it looks very, very similar to some of those Microsorum aquatic ferns. I don't really have much else to say about that, just kind of thought it was cool, interesting. Plants can be in the same family and have very different care requirements. I do know when I have kept the uh, polypodiums in the past, they really like seaweed fertilizer, which does seem to be the case for a lot of ferns, but with this one, it just kind of helped them green up a little bit better. But while it's in its active growing season, it's a, okay, it's a tropical, so technically they always have an active growing season, but when growing a plant indoors as a house plant or someone like me where they're inside as a house plant, but then outside during the spring, summer, and part of fall, then their active growing season is going to be when things are nice and warm and then they're just kind of kind of chill out during the winter time so i'll fertilize it monthly with a half strength liquid seaweed fertilizer that's going to help promote that deep green foliage help release nitrogen into the soil as that gets broken down and i'll keep it evenly moist i'm not going to let this dry out like Ideally, not at all, but I'm sure it will at some point. I'm not perfect. I can't water them 24 seven, but not for very long, not at all. Especially outside where there's more airflow, it's going to dry out a lot more quickly. And I'd like to say it's more humid out there, but my grow space is pretty humid. Like right now, what are we at right now? You see it's 62% humidity right now, which is 
They're not super high. It's been higher than that for sure, but it's high enough. Oh, 63, it just went up. That's probably because I just missed this for that slow motion shot. This being a fern that likes humidity, as are most ferns, daily mistings can be beneficial. If you notice spots or anything forming on the foliage, then maybe cut back on that. Or, I mean, if you really want to switch to using a bottled water, something that's not high in mineral content, hopefully that wouldn't leave the spots on the leaves. And then as always, when misting a fern, it's good to make sure that any water that ends up down inside the crown of the plant, all the way down in here, that that doesn't stay sopping wet. You wanna let that crown dry out a little bit in between mistings. Doesn't have to be for very long, but just enough so that you don't encourage fungal or bacterial growth or ultimately just crown rot. I have seen these guys grown in hanging baskets before and what eventually they'll start to do is this foliage that I called wonky, even though it's not really wonky, this is kind of what it's supposed to do. That'll start to come out from the sides of the entire basket. It looks really, really neat. It's really fun to have ferns around that have a different type of texture to them. Really all ferns add amazing texture, even if it's just your stereotypical palmitate type of frond versus something like this that's more of a broad leaf with the crazy tips on them. Adds a nice interest. And this one should stay small enough that it would make a nice tabletop plant too if you have a nice humid room that gets a lot of ambient light during the day, but it wouldn't have to be sitting in direct sun. Away from drafts and all of those things, you don't want it to be, you don't want air blowing on it, drying it out very quickly. And as always, humidity trays help. Not this, I'm giving it a soak. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I soak a lot of my ferns and that's partially just because Usually there's so much going on inside of the plants that when I water, it just kind of goes everywhere. So I sort of like to give them a soak when I can and I just sort of come in like so, put them in their little drainage dish, water them in from the top, let the bottom fill up and give them like, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes to have a drink. Not very long, just enough so I see the water level start to go down and when the water level stops going down, it just kind of sits there for several minutes and I know it's had enough. I generally do that probably once a week and it varies from fern to fern. Something like my staghorn ferns, I don't do that with them at all or even my bird's nest ferns. So I do have one that's very thirsty right now that I also picked up when I got this one. I'll go ahead and show it to you. You wanna see it? Since I don't have a label for it, it's not going to have its own fern Friday, but that's what this one is right here. It's some type of a splenium, some type of bird's nest fern. It does remind me a lot of the crispy or the crispy wave but usually those crispy waves have more rippling inside the front and not just on the edge. So I'm wondering if maybe this variety is the ripple. I think there's one called ripple or Mr. Ripple. But again, she's thirsty, so I'll go ahead and give that one a drink, scoot it off to the side. It doesn't look like the other one, the big fern's been drinking for a few minutes. So I'll go ahead and let her hang back here. Wow, that was a heck of a sidetrack, sorry. But I just thought I'd throw it out there. Maybe a little homework assignment. You guys let me know. What do you think this bird's nest fern is? What variety? Oh, what was my point? Oh, the bird's nest ferns. They can typically, in my experience, while they like moisture and they like humidity, they're pretty forgiving if you let them dry out. This fern, the polypodiums, not so much, not as much at all. Though in the winter months when it doesn't need to be watered as often, it's actually a good idea to let it dry out a little bit more than you would when it's in active growth. So probably, I don't know, it depends on where you live, but once it's inside, the uh, sunlight's more weak, the humidity's a lot more low, the air, it's just overall just very different growing conditions compared to outdoors, then that's when it's a good idea to kind of cut back on the watering. Still let them stay consistently moist. To start out, I'd let that top inch or so of soil dry out a little bit between waterings during the winter months. See how it does. If you're noticing dull foliage, limp foliage, weak foliage, then go ahead up that watering. Conditions vary so much from environment to environment, it's so hard to say how often a plant should be watered. So with a lot of plants, especially ferns, I, what I usually recommend to people, what I suggest is that it's kind of trial and error. Start off on the drier side, let the plant dry out a little bit between waterings. If it's not looking like it's doing well with that, then up how much you're watering it or how often you're watering it. But make sure whenever watering a plant that that water goes straight through the bottom of the pot. It needs, they do need deep watering for healthy and proper root growth. I absolutely love the character of this plant on this foliage. It's glossy, it's green, it's got really, really big, thick veins in it, which I guess could grow some people out. I think it looks really neat. It's kind of like just a little monster fern, like something ripped straight out of the ocean. It does remind me a lot of an aquatic plant, like kelp. She's just fun and pretty. I'm happy I got this one. Comment down below, anything to add, always put that down there into the comments. It's really good to get a conversation going, kind of make the comments like a fun learning environment. Or just so like, ooh, that's pretty. Or maybe you hate it. Like I said, it could be something that kind of grosses people out. I mean, I can see that. I can see how someone might think it's kind of a gross looking fern. 
awesome, but I think it's super neat. Or just comment down below and say hi. I love talking to everybody. I have all my social media linked down below. Follow me, I'll follow you back. I use Instagram far more than anything else. I love seeing everybody's pictures and what everybody has got going on in their gardens. And of course, don't forget that like button. I really appreciate it. It makes a big difference for the videos. And subscribe as well and hit the notification bell because I do upload multiple times a week. That notification bell lets you know when the new when the new videos come out. That's how all that works. As always, hope everybody's doing well, that life is just great and everything's going beautifully for you. Of course, most importantly, keep on growing, everybody. Bye-bye.